Hello, fellow realists. I'm David Ravel, and this is Value Side. For all of our articles and podcasts, visit valueside.com. Today, America and the Foolish Maidens. Jesus told the story of the wise and foolish maidens. One night, a group of maidens went out to meet the bridegroom. The wise maidens thought to bring along a jar of oil with their lamps, but the foolish maidens brought no extra oil. Now, the bridegroom was apparently delayed and did not arrive until midnight. Only the wise maidens' lamps were still burning. The other maidens, the impetuous ones, hadn't planned ahead, thinking only of the moment they had no provision for extra oil. And by the time the bridegroom arrived, these foolish maidens' lamps had burnt dry, and there was simply no oil left for them. The foolish maidens had provided for no reserve. Isn't that a perfect analogy of today's current energy policy, don't you think? The Biden administration has been consistent in their just-enough-for-today oil policy. From canceling much-needed federal oil leases to stopping construction on oil pipelines, This group in Washington has continually reduced our oil supplies. And just like those foolish maidens of two millennia ago, this administration has acted impetuously. With little foresight, this president has cut off fully 10% of this nation's oil supply when he stopped all Russian oil imports. In an act of pure virtue signaling, Biden cut off imports from Russian oil over the Ukraine conflict. It may have seemed satisfying at the time, but there was apparently little planning for the ramifications of this action. Did the administration realize that we desperately need these oil imports, especially at just the time when the price of oil is a principal driver of this dreadful inflation? Instead, another stopgap measure is proposed. Act first, plan later seems to be the event. Biden has proposed the largest release of oil from our strategic reserves. Now, the strategic reserves were set aside to be used in the case of war. This oil and gas was to fuel our Navy, our Air Force, and our Army when the nation does get embroiled in war, providing much-needed fuel to fight, just when other resources might not be available. In a purely political move, however, Biden is now proposing to sell a million barrels a day out of the reserve for the next six months, perfectly timed to coincide with the run-up to the midterm elections. That's about 180 million barrels of oil, or about half of the total oil reserve. Another impetuous move by this president. A short-term solution to a long-range problem. You'll note, however, there is one answer that has not been supplied, and that is how to provide additional supplies of oil to meet our current needs domestically. It's a question that none other than Jamie Dimon raised last week. Dimon, who is president of the nation's largest bank, J.P. Morgan Chase, has argued that what's needed is a Manhattan-type project to develop domestic oil production. That Manhattan project, you'll recall, was the World War II program that developed the nuclear bomb and was instrumental in defeating the Japanese. Such is the urgency which Diamond and others place on the U.S. developing a sustainable energy program here at home, one that most definitely includes oil and gas. Yet Biden has turned a deaf ear to Diamond and all the others. It continues to be a puzzle. Just how is it that this president, like those foolish maidens of long ago, continues on a course which will certainly leave us without enough oil. Now, in economic news this morning, it's a very big day with a whole raft of significant reports. Leading off will be the latest on the U.S. balance of trade. Now, today's will be the combined trade number, which includes both goods and services. We do okay, not great, in the service exports, and that makes this trade number better than just the goods trade. But still, even with today's combined trades in goods and services, we are hitting all-time record lows in this report. The street expects today's report to be in the same neighborhood as last month when we hit an all-time record $89 billion deficit. It's not good news for the U.S. 
then we will get three separate measures for the Purchasing Managers Index, and all are expected to be solidly positive. Finally, comes the latest in non-manufacturing prices. Here we've seemed to break out to new highs, pricing levels that we haven't seen in more than 15 years. So watch carefully when the ISM announces the latest in non-manufacturing prices. It could be a most unpleasant surprise. Now it's another light day in earnings as companies are just starting to report on the quarter that just closed. Up this morning will be Lighting Company Acuity Brands, followed this afternoon by Novo Gold Resources. And that's the value side for this Tuesday, April the 5th. For all of our podcasts and blog posts, visit valueside.com. I'm David Ravel. ValueSide is independently written and researched. The views expressed are strictly my own. Thank you.